Today, as we look at this Pentecost Sunday, this day we celebrate the birth of the Christian church, we are going to uh, revolve around one core theme and in fact one core word, and, and here it is, participate. It is a verb, it means to take part, and kids, when you come up for kids' time, this is exactly where we're going to start. So there are the three answers uh, that you're going to want to come up with. In the gospel, Jesus is drawing uh, this dance. And Jesus is saying, when you've seen the Father, you've seen me. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And in fact, Whatever words you hear me say, Jesus says, they are from the Father. He even goes a step further. He goes, by the way, as I depart from this place, I will ask the Father to send another one, the Advocate. In that gospel, we see participation, and it is a verb, and they are taking part together, Father, Son and Spirit. In the Acts text, the faithful have gathered in Jerusalem. It's what Jesus told them to do on the Ascension Day. Jesus says, go to Jerusalem and wait there. And they've gone to Jerusalem, and they've waited, and they're gathered together, and in the midst of their gathering, uh, the wind blows, and there are our flames almost like fire, and then there is all this conversation, this talking, and everyone that is gathered there, no matter where they are from, far and wide, no matter whether they are Jew, no matter whether they are Greek, no matter whether they are Arab, all of them are hearing the good news in a language that makes sense to them. God, who participated with God's self, now chooses to participate with humanity. And the way that works is God pours God's self out in the Spirit. And in that text from Romans, we are reminded how this relationship, how this participate, a verb to take part, how it works with God. Because we have a God that says, I come to you and I choose you. And by the way, I adopt you. You are mine. And if you are mine, that means you are heirs of all the gifts that I choose to pour out on your behalf. So on this Pentecost Sunday, we begin with this notion of participate a verb, take part. And we have the Godhead, Father, Son, and Spirit participating together. We have God participating with humanity as God pours himself out through the Spirit, as God calls us his children, as God calls us uh, to, to, to himself to receive the gifts, gifts prepared for us. And God uh, calls us to participate. Last week, the language that I used was either the stargazer who is inactive and simply a spectator, or the trailblazer. The trailblazer is, is active. The trailblazer is listening and following and going and witnessing. He is participant, taking part. And in the midst of all that that is happening on this Pentecost Sunday, we have three young women in this congregation that when they were babies were brought to the font. And in that act, their parents made promises and their godparents made promises and churches made promises to them. But the reality was, it was God's promises who marked it up. 
on the day of their baptism, God said, this one is mine, this one is mine, this one is mine. And today, on Confirmation Sunday, these three young women step up to participate in the life of the church in a brand new way, an active way that they will take part in, in their own faith life. But absolutely, how that unfolds here in this place and the greater church. Participate. It is a verb. It means to take part. Kids, you want to come on up and we're going to uh, put a little bit of life to that. Kids time. I know, I mix things up. <laughs> you never know. Come on in, come on in. Come on in. Okay, I asked you to remember something. What was the word for today? Participate. What else do you, what was that? Oh, thank you. The word was participate, and it means to take part. And I said one more thing about it. What else did I say? It's a verb. What's a verb? <laughs> a verb is an action word. Okay, so let's do a little practice. Is dancing a verb? Yes. Because it's an action. Is talking a verb? Yes. yes because fabulous. Running? Yes. How about how about lump? Well, it's probably even a noun, but it is, is lump active? No. no, no, it's not. Well, when you move into the lump, you're right, Noah. When you move into the lump, it is action, but when you're in the lump, inaction. Okay, so, I have a bull. Is a bull action? No. A bull is not action. What if I told you this was a singing bowl? Anybody gonna believe me? Can you hear anything? Can you hear anything? Anybody hear anything? Nobody can hear anything. You're exactly right. Because the only way a bowl will sing is with action. Can you hear it? Yeah, yeah. So, can you hear it now? So left to its own, it's just a bull, but with the stick it became a singing bull. This is exactly what the Gospel and the Acts text are talking about. Left to our own device, we are much like the bull, but God does not leave us to our own device. The Holy Spirit is poured out on us and with that activity, empowers us to be the church and empowers us to be the kingdom of God. And today, on Pentecost, we celebrate the God of singing bowls and of children. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit that you poured out upon your people to create your church. On this Pentecost Sunday in Silverton, Oregon, we pray for the gift of your Holy Spirit to continue to be poured out, that we would be your church, that we would be the kingdom of God in this place. All this we pray in your name. Amen. Thank you very much. <coughs> Well, the 